I've been thinking about Shell recently from the Portal games. In particular, the curves. No, not those, you pervert. I think about them in my special time. I'm on about these, or rather, Shell's long fall boots. I mean, they're a cool idea. Who doesn't want the ability to fall from any height and avoid your once-in-a-lifetime water balloon impression? Then I thought, is it possible that you could have such a boot in real life? Well, as it turns out, that's a great topic for my show, Is It Possible, where I ask, Is it possible? I could have fit it To set some criteria here early on, you have to understand why the long fall boots exist in the first place. You see, this isn't out of some kindness geared towards the test subjects. These were solely created to protect the handheld portal device, which is much more valuable than any expendable test subject. If you remove the risk of people becoming a human pizza on the floor when falling from great heights due to them fucking up in the test, then you remove the risk your shiny new gun does an impression of a vase hitting the ground. So, in theory, to have an acceptable level of protection for real world use, we'd only have to survive one fall. Just like someone using a parachute here in Reelsville, we tend to only fall from great heights once, unless you fell into a huge slingshot or giant trebuchet and was flung back up, which would just be fucking bad luck. You could fall once, have the boots destroyed, and the test subject perish as long as the device survived unscathed, and it would be a success as far as what the boots' real purpose was. In a world where you're more asked about a piece of technology over the life of a human, the test subject surviving is just an added bonus. However, we want to know if the boots could work like they do in the game, surviving fall after fall over and over with no consequences whatsoever. So can they do that then? Well first we need to understand what they have to put up with to cut the mustard. Well in effect the boots must absorb the force of a human body travelling at speeds which are likely to ruin your day. Let's see if we can dig a little deeper into the numbers. So as no information was available for Shell's vitals, we'll take the average statistics of an American woman at the period Portal 1 takes place, which according to the timeline is 2010. So we turn to the CDC, whose anthropometric reference data for children and adults tells us that the average weight for an American woman in that period is 166.2 pounds. Fuck, that's virtually 12 stone. 5 foot 4 and 12 stone. That can't be right, sounds like a Russian shot putter. I had to check the women of my country to see if I had bragging rights and as it turns out the average British woman is an overweight little fucker too which is weird it's not like we've got them carrying logs. For comparison it seems the average American woman in 2010 weighed about the same as the average American man did in 1960. Anyway I digress, we now have some stats to impose over Shell until we have something more definitive. Shell our Oompa Loompa is 5 foot 4 and almost 12 stone. So we can start to calculate some of the forces the boots will have to endure. Well, part of the forces are suggested in the name of the act of free falling, as in the only force acting on the boots wearer in the downward sense is gravity. So remember, gravity is the only thing rushing to reacquaint you, the player, and the tarmac. So as our Oompa Loompa shuffles her way off a high platform, gravity is acting on her, increasing her speed. The speed at which Shell rushes to the floor under the force of gravity is known as the acceleration of gravity and is given as a figure of 9.8 meters per second. This figure can vary, but it's good enough for what we're doing. So like I say, gravity is accelerating Shell at 9.8 meters per second, and that's actually per second. In other words, as Shell fell, her speed would accelerate by 9.8 meters per second every second until she made contact with the floor. So at one second, she would be going 9.8 meters per second, at 2 seconds she'd be travelling 19.6, at 3 seconds 29.4 and so on and so on. This acceleration increases until Shell achieves her terminal velocity. Terminal velocity, if you're wondering, is a film where Charlie Sheen plays a maverick skydiver that teams up with a former KGB member to stop the Russian Mafia from stealing gold. Of course I'm just being hilarious. Terminal velocity is the point at which gravity stops accelerating due to the increase of air resistance or drag. Now, the amount of drag force produced depends on the square of the velocity, so as Shell accelerates under the force of gravity, her drag increases. It quickly reaches the point where the drag acting on Shell equals her weight, and at this point, she stops accelerating, continuing to fall at that constant speed. Holy shit, this far in, you've realised you're learning things when you only came because the video was something to do about video games. It's, it's like you let me play with your boobs because you thought I was going to buy you a meal, but I'm so caught up in playing with your boobs, it looks like we're never going to get to that restaurant. This boob fondling has gone on for too long, you're going to have to go all the way now if you want your free dindin, you little whore. Now, her shape also plays a factor. If she fell belly to earth, her terminal velocity would be much lower, but Shell lands feet first, meaning she's more aerodynamic like a bullet. 
Or think of it this way, when you're driving down the road and you stick your arm out of the window, the wind pushes back against you. If your palm is flat into the wind, you'll feel more resistance than if you lay it sideways. Be careful if you try this yourself, as police won't accept this as to the reason you're in the red light district at 3 in the morning, going half a mile an hour, dressed as a penguin with a heroin needle sticking out of your bollock, they're just funny that way. But how fast can a person really go, you ask, while you scratch your chin? God, I hope it's your chin. Well, let's look at Felix, an Austrian skydiver who jumped from an estimated 24 miles high and he's said to have reached a speed of 843.6 miles per hour. Yep, quicker than shit off a chrome shovel. Now let's look at Shelly Baby and crunch some of her vitals. That way we can get the force of impact on the ground. If Shell fell 500 meters like in this clip, oh roller you silky bastard, we know her mass to be an average of a female from American land in that period, plop in our gravity number and a distance travelled after impact which would change varying on the floor surface and we see her velocity would achieve 98.99 meters per second which is roughly 221 miles per hour. With a kinetic energy of 369,396.55 joules hitting the ground on an area the size of, well, however much area those things on a feet take up, that's almost 370 kilojoules of energy impacting the ground in a split second like a bomb. By the way, one gram of TNT is said to release 4.184 kilojoules if, like me, you were wondering. Putting each 500 meter landing at producing roughly the same output energy as 88 grams of trinitrotoyly. Oh, you big word bastard! Now we have some real numbers to work with, can we actually have a real pair of these boots ourselves? Well, looking how the boots function, they have the wearer on their tippy toes with presumably that bow looking thing on the heel absorbing any otherwise murderous energy. I can't think where I've seen that bow like shape before. Oh yeah, it looks like a bow. The type Robin Hood might have used when he saved the English from Adolf Hitler and established the NHS just before he destroyed the ring in the third episode of the series or something like that. I'm not too up on history, but that all sounds legit. Anyway, enough of nonces in tights, we're focusing on bows. You see, a bow's power comes from its ability to store energy in its limbs. When the archer draws his bow, he's taking energy from his muscles and temporarily storing it on those flexible bow limbs. When he releases, those flexible limbs return that energy, or to say most of that energy, back through the arrow as it gives flight. The energy you can store in a bow is known as its draw weight. This is great because we can quickly look at what size bow we can strap to the back of our welly bobs to give us the same power. 8,304,365 pounds of draw weight. I can't imagine we can get one of those off Amazon and I imagine the limbs of this super duper bow would be the same size as a block of flats. So I think traditional bow limbs won't make the grade. Our ray of sunshine comes from the advancement in prosthetic limbs made famous by disabled athlete Oscar Pistorius, also known as the Blade Runner. He made this type of prosthetic world famous, and if I'm not mistaken, he's famous for another reason that eludes me at this minute. But anyway, back to the blades. You see, they're constructed from a special carbon fiber reinforced polymer. Just that name alone has you going, shit, yeah, that sounds like the futuristic material we need. And the tensile yield of the materials, or in plain English, the amount of stress the material can take without deforming is reassuringly good. Without knowing for sure the exact amount of area shell distributes the force she exerts on the ground, I can't accurately tell what tolerances they would 100% need. Then take into account the boot has to somehow dissipate the force so your legs don't get ripped off in the landing and also must contain some gyroscopic mechanism to keep you stable and always landing on your feet, then it starts to get a bit distant. But I have to say, I feel like the answer is surprisingly, yes, yes it is possible. At some point in the future, we could have some form of free fall boots. I can't say I'd want to be the first guy to try them, but I think they'd be awesome. Then again, I could be totally wrong and all my calculations are fucking garbage. I am after all, just a regular hairy ass guy who likes video games. Case closed. <laughs>